Good afternoon, welcome to the channel. Today we are going to be doing a small upgrade on our solar array, and that is adding this combiner box. I will show you all the little parts and pieces and how we are putting it together. Let's talk about it. First things first, before doing anything, disconnect your panels in several different places. First, disconnect your panels themselves, and you can see our wire is hanging right here from one of our strings. That's disconnected from the PV wires that run through the conduit and into our house. And then disconnect everything in your house, including your inverters and your batteries. Make sure you use the PV disconnects as well and just disconnect absolutely everything. And you wanna make 100% sure that you do this because we are working in the daytime and the panels are live. So you do not wanna mess with that DC voltage. And remember, you have to shut those inverters off because nothing can be under load while you are working with this. Additionally, some high frequency inverters will send voltage back through your PV lines to your panels. And although it's small, it can hurt you. So disconnect everything. Let me show you what we've done so far in the box and we'll go over everything. Now I'm just using this plastic Tycon box and this box has a grid on the back of it where you can screw in DIN rails to put on your breakers and your surge protection and whatever else you need. I like these plastic boxes. They obviously don't have to be grounded like a metal box. I do have a grounding bar here, but that's for our electrical grounding conductors. But the box itself obviously doesn't need to be grounded to anything. Over here I'm using these adjustable grommets that tighten around the wires. I'm using these for our PV wires that are coming into the box from the panels and also for our electrical grounding conductor which is coming in from our other array. And let me show you where that's coming from. We have it through this conduit which is run underground to our other array in front. We've got our electrical grounding conductor and the positive and negative PV wires that are just one string from that front array. First we have our Sirius solar panels bonded to our EG4 bright mount with these clips and then additionally, we have these connectors right here, which have our electrical grounding conductor, our bare wire copper, and that is bonded, or bonded with a clip on the backside. And then from our conduit that comes under the ground from the larger array piece, we've got our electrical grounding conductor, and it comes up here and connects with our clamp that has our bare copper wire in it. Okay, back to our box. We've got some inexpensive surge protectors here. These are 1000 volt surge protectors. We've got one for each string. And what that's gonna do is send any stray voltage, maybe it's a lightning strike in the area from that front array, and it's gonna send it through our electrical grounding conductors all the way back through the system and to the main rod for our house, the main ground rod. From there, we've got a DC breaker for each string that we have on our array. Of course, we have three. Each of them is a different amperage depending on the string. I'm gonna wire this the same way as I did our Victron system out at the barn. If you haven't seen that video series, go click at the top of the screen. Okay, so as you can see, I've got these surge protectors mounted upside down. So our ground is coming off the top and down to our ground bar. We've got this grounding conductor coming from the array up front, like I said earlier, and then we've got this grounding conductor back through to the house in the entire system. Down here, we've got what's called a dinkle terminal. These are DIN rail mounted, and you can gang them together to make like mini bus bars, essentially. So they just snap on the DIN rail like that, and then they've got these jumpers that you can use that go between in these little slots and you can make these mini bus bars. And I'll show you what we're doing with these in a second. So for each string, you are going to need four of these, two on the negative side, two on the positive side, and I'll show you why. And talking on the camera just a few seconds ago, I realized that my DIN rail here was too short because I need 12 of these Dinkle terminals to accommodate three breakers. So just keep that in mind and the spacing within your uh, combiner box. Now I have the PV wires from the panels and these are disconnected, so be cognizant of that. Don't work with live wires, these are not. Now what I can do is use a ferrule on the ends of these wires to put into our breakers. Now the wire that I have is from Signature Solar and it's incredibly thick. The jacket on this or the insulation jacket is so thick that I have to cut the ferro base with my knife, kind of like make a slit down it, and 
so that it'll pop over the end of the jacket. Now you can elect to use ferrules if you want, but this is large stranded wire. So these wires aren't fraying and they're not moving around very much at all. Now these do come in handy when you're putting them on the dinkle din rails because the actual terminal block inside there is a little bit smaller. So it does slide in much easier. Let me put one on to show you. You are going to want to cut the insulation back so that your wires come all the way out to the end of the metal part of the ferrule. Then take your ferrule crimping tool and clamp down on it. That gives you a nice solid connection. Again, I'll link all the tools we use for our projects down in the description below the video. Our conductors from our panels will come into the top of these breakers. These are oriented in the correct up position. Always allow yourself some extra slack in your wires just for adjustments. Now our PV lines that go into the house need to come into the bottom of our dinkle terminals right here. Obviously black to black, red to red. Now we're gonna make what's called jumpers. I'm gonna use this other PV wire that's much more flexible to make those jumpers. You can use THHN if you want. Just make sure it's the same gauge as your PV wires and everything else in the system. So our jumper wires are gonna come from the top of our dinkle terminals to the bottom of our breaker. And they're also gonna come from the top of our dinkle rails over to our breaker. Obviously this is a very short distance, but you leave yourself an, a big enough coil that you've got some room to play with. You can always move these around your box. It takes a minute or two to craft all of the jumper wires. Now I'm gonna install them. Okay, first step, we are going from our dinkle terminals in one port and up to our breaker. So we've got our PV lines into the breaker, out of the breaker, and into our dinkle terminal. Next step is we're gonna go from the other side of the dinkle terminal up to our surge protector. For our surge protector, it is going to be mounted upside down on our top rail. And then the short ground conductor is going to come from the top, from the ground side, and down into our grounding bar. Now we're gonna connect the red jumper to the red terminal and come up to the positive on our surge protector. Okay, that's one string complete. So now we've shortened our PV wires. We have to do jumpers to get from this back up to where it connects to the panels. You will have to be good with your wire management and the way you do your wires in here because it will be tight. There's a lot of wires running everywhere in here. So this box may be a little small for three strings. This one is 16 by 12. Just buy a bigger box or be super neat and tidy so everything fits nicely. There we go, friends. That's how we made our combiner box for our solar array. If you have any questions, please leave them for me in the comment section below. Now go check out these videos right here, which is how we installed our EG4 6000 XP inverters. Have a beautiful, blessed day. See you next time. Bye.